Hello and welcome back. Uh, this is 12th and last video of this series where we are configuring Palo Alto Virtual Appliance on Microsoft Azure platform uh, with high availability using Microsoft Azure Load Balancer. So in this last video, we'll configure and test east-west traffic uh, between two test VMs and we'll also verify it through the firewall logs. So in previous videos, uh, we have provisioned two virtual machines two test virtual machines um, so one of the uh, virtual machine is also accessible from outside we have configured uh, inbound uh, NAT for that and we we uh, in previous video we managed to uh, successfully access this virtual machine from outside so what in this video we, uh, we are going to uh, generate traffic between these test VMs and we'll see how our firewalls will allow this traffic before that let's go back to our solution diagram so these are two test vnets uh, test VMs both have same vnet but different subnets so first VM test VM1 is configured with 172.200.100.0 subnet and test VM2 is configured with 172.200.200.0 slash 28 subnet. Both these VMs are in part of the same VNet, but they have VNet pairing enabled with the firewall VNet. And we have also configured a, a routing table, which is assigned to uh, subnets of both the VMs. And this routing table is configured to send all the traffic to towards the Azure internal load balancer. And then Azure internal load balancer is configured to send traffic to the trust interfaces of the firewall. So let's go to the RDP session. Uh, we'll quickly verify the IP address on this VM. So this VM is 172.60, uh, 172.200.100.4, and our destination VM is 172.200.200.4. Before that, let's verify the host name on this VM. So this is Palo uh, dash temp VM dash zero one. So what we'll do is we will try to take RDP of the test VM two from the test VM one. So that is 172.200.200.4. Yeah, so we are able to take the RDP. Let's put in the username and password. Hello, admin, and the password. So uh, I was able to uh, take the RDP session of the test VM2 from the test VM1 successfully. Let's see how, how uh, we can see this traffic on the firewall. So what we'll do is we'll go to firewall one. In uh, source IP address, we will add fire, uh, in fact, let's not add source IP. We'll just add 172.200.100.4. Uh, this is the IP address of the of the test VM1, and I'll remove .src. So it means that it will check for this IP whether it's source traffic or destination traffic. And similarly, we'll add one uh, second test VM 172.200.200.4. So with this query, we can check all the traffic between these two VMs. Now let's check on second VM as well, second firewall as, as well. So at the moment, we don't see any traffic between 172.100.4 and 172.200.200.4. Let's verify the IPs again, 200.100.4. All right, so we'll go back to the test VM1 and we'll run the trace route. One seventy two dot two hundred dot two hundred dot four. All 
all right we also check the routing table This is a virtual network. If you go to subnets, we can see both subnets are there and both subnets have a same routing table, which is a test VM RT. Let's go to routes. So we have defined a route that whatever traffic is there, send uh, our default route is there to send it to internal load balancer. So let's check effective routes as well. Facebook is also not completing so if you check for the destination subnet here which is 172 dot for the VM one the destination subnet is 172 dot 200 or 200 and it's part of a virtual network so that's why I think it's not going to firewall because it's part of virtual network so what we should do is we should go to the routes and add a specific route here because both the subnets are part of the same uh, same vnet so what we'll do is destination address is ip address 172.200.200.0 slash 28 and in next talk we'll define a virtual appliance and 172.16.200.10 that is the IP of our load balancer all right so this is done let's check effective routes once again for VM1 Okay, now we can see that any traffic for this subnet should pass through a virtual appliance. So let's go back and try generating some traffic. So what we'll do is we'll open a new session of PowerShell. Windows PowerShell. Type in test-net connection 172.200.200.4 and let's try sending traffic on port 3389. the TCP test succeeds means the communication is there let's try sending some traffic on port 445 which is uh, file share SMP port let's see if we can see this traffic on firewall now Yeah, as you can see now after adding that static route, we are able to see traffic flowing through the firewall. So what does it mean? It means that all the east-west traffic is also being managed through the firewall. It means that all the traffic between the firewall, with between the virtual servers or virtual machine, it could be Kubernetes, it could be web apps. Uh, power apps whatever resources you are provisioning it could be managed SQL server on your Azure platform these resources will communicate with each other using a firewall policy so what benefits does it add it's easiest isn't it, uh, it easier to access virtual machine uh, without any firewall yes it is easier but it's not secure so when you send traffic through the firewall you can implement security policies you can configure IPS IDS web uh, web policies uh, you can configure uh, encryption decryption and all the all the security policies all the features of Palo Alto firewall you can configure and eventually it, in, it adds more security to your uh, infrastructure landscape 
so another another reason is that for example if you have a dmz uh, environment as well for example uh, you want your web server to be accessible from outside so let's say you will enable uh, enable an inbound net rule here on external load balancer and then you configure your firewall to send a traffic to web server which is part of dmz network and then dmz network should be accessing your uh, uh, DB server or your app server only through the firewall. So in that scenario also you need to ensure that all the traffic between the servers, between the Kubernetes, between the containers, between the web apps should process through the firewall. So this is what we are doing here. Uh, as you can see all the traffic is being passed to the firewall and uh, earlier in earlier videos we had configured a policy called LAN to LAN. So all this traffic is being processed through land to land firewall policy. Right now we have this wide open policy, but let's let's uh, let's uh, take an example. If we had uh, disabled port double three eight nine, or we uh, we we did not allow this port double three eight nine in our land to land policy, then definitely this traffic will fail. So which adds at extra layer of security. Let's see if we see any traffic on the firewall one as well. But for now, all the traffic is being processed. Now, now there is a traffic for port 445 and 3389. It is being processed from the firewall one again using the same firewall policy. And it also gives you an example uh, uh, where you can see that traffic is being diverted and being load balanced between the firewalls. Some of the traffic is being processed through the firewall one and some of the traffic is being processed through the firewall two. So that's a, a good example on how uh, Microsoft Azure Load Balancer equally distributes the traffic. And uh, there are uh, configuration options like session persistence or client IP. You can change or configure those policies in your load balancer settings. For example, if you go to load balancing rules in your uh, load balancer, you can go to load balancer settings. And here you can configure whether you want to uh, configure session persistence. For example, in session persistence, it's client IP and client IP protocol. Uh, and you can also configure TCP reset settings, timeout set settings. So all those configurations and options are there. It's it's based on your uh, organizational needs, whether you want to configure that or not. So that's it, I guess. Uh, we are done with the video number 12 as well, where we have tested east-west traffic. Um, in previous videos, we have also tested north-south traffic. And uh, I think this is the end of our this series of deploying Palo Alto virtual appliance on Microsoft Azure platform using Azure Load Balancer. So if you have any comments or if you have any feedback, please write to me on this email address or you can comment down below. And if you need help, if you get stuck somewhere with this configuration, please let us know. In next series, we'll come up with, um, uh, with the Palo Alto uh, virtual appliance deployment on Azure using uh, again high, with our high availability but using Azure application gateway which is a layer 7 load balancer and uh, we are also planning to come up with the 40 gate deployment on Azure with the high availability so similar way instead of Palo Alto uh, appliances we'll be using 40 gate appliances so stay tuned uh, let us know if you have any feedback and uh, we'll see you again thank you so much